Hello, Rob here. Welcome back to Memphis Lab. My Memphis Lab, Rob's Memphis Lab. Today, we're going to talk about color encoding. Why? Because when we get to the HD world, everything's gonna be in component video. Three signals. Oh, three Shostakovich. Yeah, it's gonna be three. Let's go back to the beginning of time <laughs> or, or somewhere like that. Let's start with color bars. We're talking about color encoding. We should talk about color bars. Here we have some color bars, okay? There's a lot of information to be gleaned from color bars. Like how did they do it? What's it made out of and such? And we're gonna see there's a pattern and we're gonna follow along and see what that does for us. <laughs> Where does that take us? So it turns out if you didn't already know this, that color bars are created by combinations of good old red, green, and blue. I say red, green, and blue, RGB. And uh, we can, by combining those in a suspiciously binary looking way, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off. Yeah, we get these combination of colors. All right, that's lovely. But let's step back a little bit. Let's step back a little even further. How far back can we go? We can go back pretty darn far. Let's go back to the electromagnetic spectrum, the part our eyeballs can see. Because there's this question, why red, green, blue? How does that all work? Let's go all the way back to our early primate ancestors or wherever the hell color vision for us came from. And we can see what we can see. <laughs> and we'll notice that along this spectrum, yeah, that's a spectrum. So it looks like a spectrum. We have, we have a red, no. Then we have green, no. And then we have blue, oh. Interesting. And somehow all the colors come out of that. Well, I had this great metaphor, you know, me and my metaphors. It's all about audio. <laughs> groovy metaphors that come into my head in the middle of the night. And I started thinking about how your usual speaker has three speakers in it. It has a woofer, a mid-range, and a tweeter. And with those three frequencies, you get all the sounds. But wait, Rob, what about the subwoofer? Down here, there is infrared, great for snakes. If you're looking for warm-blooded little mammals in that dark hole, oh, glowing, I can see it. Or if you're like a bee flying around and you want to find out where that really good pollen is, you can see up here in the ultraviolet. But us normal humans just see in these three colors when we have all the cones working. Some people don't have all their cones going. So we're going to start with that. And it turns out that uh, in a color camera, over here, it's red, green, and blue. And then they got to move it into something. Over here, it comes out to the TV, essentially red, green, and blue. And we had to encode it somewhere along the way. Uh, initially, we wanted to get one signal. And more initially than that, we didn't have color. We had black and white. Hmm. Now, the step from black and white to color had to be backward compatible. All the black and white TV sets still needed to work, yeah? So they had to smoosh the color on top of the black and white in such a way as it could be ignored or interpreted, yeah? Okay, let's go back. So the question then arises, how do we get the luminance? Our uh, rods were crying out for brightness. The cones were all happy, but what about the rods? The rods are going, I need gray. For one thing, you gotta go gray back to the black and white. And for another thing, we can't just have red, green, and blue, can we? Especially when we start to have three wires and one of them is the Y, the luminance, and the two others are the color. Wait a minute, two? But there were three colors, Rob. What are we going to do? <laughs> well, first, let's derive the Y from the RGB. How are we going to do that? Well, we look back here at this lovely binary pattern, see? And there's the blue, and blue, and blue, and the red, red, and green. And uh, we're going to say, you know what? That green, that green's a lot brighter than that red, which is a lot brighter than that blue. 
I'm going to simplify things and say, you know, it's twice as much and then twice as much or, you know, half and half. Let's roughly say that because that's roughly true and see what happens. We're going to go here. Remember, here's our green and half so much red and half so much blue in terms of their contributing to the brightness. Yeah. So let's add them up and let's add them up in that pattern we remember. Uh -huh. Well, green, half as much red, half as much blue add together. Oh, that looks like the highest luminance. And you see the pattern continues, the blue, 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 blue and the red, red, and, and added together. Huh, that looks kind of like the Y. So uh, what do we get? There's our Y. <laughs> the black and white TVs are happy. And it looks uh, like a grayscale. Let's talk about the color difference signals for a minute. <clears throat> they did a similar thing with FM stereo. They had all these FM mono radio stations and they wanted to have stereo, so both our ears would be happy. But the mono radios had to still get mono. So what they did is they added some carrier on top and they put some information. What did they put? Did they put right or left? Eh, that wouldn't work because the folks at the original signal have to have the center or the left plus right channel. So what they did is they had up here, they did left minus right so that now you had the stereo different signals. But a similar thing happens in uh, color. We had to add color on and we're going to have color difference from the black and white. So let's start getting to creating those signals you may have recognized before. Um, the B minus Y and the R minus Y. Okay. So how do we get that? Well, first we make this minus Y. Notice that minus Y is upside down. <laughs> in fact, it's going to go negative. Here's zero. There's minus one, and it comes up to zero. That's the minus y. Here's our dear old friend, boop, 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 blue. And look what happens when we add these two together. This strange pattern. If you hook up a scope and the first time you look at the r minus y, b minus y, it's like, uh, what? Uh, that's weird. When you start to look at it this way, you say, oh, I get why it looks so squirrely. That old color bar is that reference thing. And uh, cool, there's our b minus y. I've filled in the boxes to make it easier to see, but one thing we'll notice right away before we even get to the R minus Y, which is similar, uh, this sucker goes negative. Hmm, that's interesting. The luminance always was going positive. It's above. Black is zero, white is like one. Ha! Huh. Our minus Y was negative. We weren't really using it except in the interim. But now, and here's R minus Y, uh, we've got a component signal that goes negative. That's going to be interesting later because we realize that we're not going to just rest it onto some reference like we could with Y because it pokes up and down. So you can't just rest it. You're going to have to grab hold somehow of that zero in the middle. It makes it a little more involved. In our circuit over there, we're going to cheat. <laughs> there are ways to get that zero back to zero. Uh, but we're going to play a trick and get it simpler because I vowed to get a circuit on two breadboards and I'm going to deliver. 